Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm so pleased to be joined by supervising sound editor Brian Parker, a seven-time Emmy Award nominee who is nominated this year for the Peacock series, Mrs. Davis. Uh, Brian, just congratulations on the Emmy nomination, I guess. Like, how did that feel to get recognized for this uh, great show? A bit of a surprise, to be honest. Um, I, you know, it's in the land, in the time of streaming, it's kind of hard to tell how many people are watching the show, you know? Um, and I'm obviously, maybe it's not obvious. I'm very proud of the work that we've done. It's a very weird and wacky uh, show and it has a lot of different elements going on. I'm, I'm very proud of the work, but I was definitely surprised that morning when I got a couple of text messages from colleagues like Chris Gomez and Penny Harold uh, texted me and said, hey, congratulations. And I was like, for what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's true. Like that one of the things I really love about this show is how different it is and how uh, it kind of defies easy classification and like you said like especially nowadays uh no knock on any show but it feels like original stuff like this is fewer and fewer right or fewer and further between than we've seen maybe in prior times i guess like was i'm assuming that the answer is yes but like was that like one of the things that really drew you to the the project i guess in in the early days like the the fact that it was offering you perhaps an opportunity to tackle something that has not really been seen before absolutely yeah the um the scripts are um uh i mean the form in which i read them the scripts are like uh wild and fun in their own way and they have kind of sidebars uh uh to the reader about like um the um where where some of the inspiration comes from and, and what references we hope that our reader uh picks up on in, in the scene so um it's like it's it feels very dynamic and a little bit um unanchored you know in terms of like it, it, it doesn't this is a show that uh draws from tropes but isn't itself tropey it's like it's it's a it's a it's frenetic in in how often it changes directions um i love that about the scripts and it was one of the things that made me really excited um early on so you mentioned that like drawing from tropes i guess how did like how does that like end up working with you for you right like and from a sound perspective and like certainly like you know like how are you, are you thinking of that? Like, are you thinking of like sound, tro like tropes of sound, but like, are you thinking of like that in, in, in kind of, you know, complement to this, to, to this story and stuff that's being told, but telling that story through sound? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, um, in the first four minutes of the show, um, there's um, an enormous uh, uh, crowd of people watching some Knights Templar get burned uh, at the stake for heresy and then uh a large probably i don't know 20 person sword fight um uh and and i'll have friends like as they as they find the show and pick up on it um and text me they'll say hey oh man this really reminded me of monty python in this in this moment um here and i'll it's kind of fun to, to get these incoming texts from my friends like over the course of maybe a week as they devour the show i can tell what episode they're seeing um you know as they hit certain moments uh very different moments uh, along the way anyway um so that that opening sword fight like uh is to me is very very funny as a person like i i am a person who i guess i haven't talked about this yet but i literally watched Monty Python and the Holy Grail on VHS every single day, one summer in between, I don't know, like sophomore and junior high school or something. So I like wore out a VHS tape in one summer. I like, I, I watched it every day. Um, and, and so the, like the way uh, over the top, like blood spurting, sword flying, one person takes this very seriously and the other, uh, you can't quite get your head around that thing. Um, is like <laughs> seared into my brain since I was a teenager. Uh, so, um, so it really spoke to me. And one of the things we found on Mrs. Davis is that, uh, is that the, um, the funnier her joke needs, well, I don't know, uh, is that the, 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 the path to getting a, a tropey joke to land really funny is for the sounds that compose that joke. I mean, it's all inside the, sound department obviously is that is for the sounds that compose that joke all to take themselves really seriously if you want something to be huge cartoon funny you don't use the cartoon sounds you know like that scene is much much funnier if it's like 
horrifying. <laughs> it's like really violent, and the gore is like is um, is cinematic, big, as opposed to going for like you know splatty, funny, cartoony gore. You know. Yeah. And so, like, I mean, there's and don't get me wrong. I mean, there's some absolutely wily coyote <laughs> style sound in 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 this, the series for sure. There's there's some there's some silly cartoony stuff in there when those moments are appropriate. But for for uh, for us to find the the violence of this moment funny, it's got to be through a real serious lens that that, it, that takes itself f- seriously in like a you know a big over the top cinematic kind of way. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does. Did you guys like? Was that? Did you realize that through trial and error, or like, did you kind of figure that out right away? Um, that was definitely Plan A. Um, and I will admit to having tried, like, played with balance between some elements on my own, and and tried some other approaches. But, but yeah, the idea was that, um, the idea uh, from the jump was that we go like all in on like you know this is like this is people flying through the air, you know, hyped up action style, really big gore, horrifying, beheading thing. Cool. And then, and then 12 minutes later or whatever, um, in the show, there's a motorcycle chase with, with like ATVs and they're jumping off stuff. And so like, that's like all the way into, you know, just, just as, as hyped as we could make those like hard cut, you know, hard perspective cut sounds all the way in that direction as serious as we could take that. That one is, that's an example um, of where there's some cartoony stuff because one of the ATVs does like, like land in some wet cement. And so there's some like, you know, like cartoony splat there. There's, there's a little moment we carved out for that. Um, and some, <laughs> the chase takes them like through a clown factory where they make like clown toys. So there's, Anyway, like I said, there's some definitely some wily coyote stuff going on there, but um, uh, but yeah, we're like, uh, plan A definitely was to go all the way in this direction and take and build, and and God bless my sound effects editor, uh, sound designer Roland Ty for for being on board to just like put the time in and get take each of those scenes all the way because the the amount of ground that we cover, um, in that first episode, I mean every episode, honestly, um, it's just it's a ride, it's a wild it's, ride. It, it really is. I mean, as if you were like the first episode, every, like you said, like every episode, there's some crazy thing happening or just like kind of really wild swing or like big genre thing. Do you like, I guess like for you, what was either in the first episode or just in general? I mean, I think you're nominated for the first, the episode you're nominated for is the first episode, but I guess yeah. like, was there something uh, like super challenging or that you were like, Oh, I hope this will work or like kind of thing in there, mm. like that you were very pleased with how it turned out, I guess. Yeah, um, the the trickiest, reflecting back on the whole season, the trickiest thing was getting those scenes that play in the opening of the f- first episode to play the way that they need to play differently in later episodes. Mm-hmm. And I guess, I guess I won't say more about it than that for folks who haven't dug into it yet, but... Um, um, we view those events I already described. We view them through a different lens yes. in episodes four and five. Right, right. And and there's um, there's a somewhat subtle perspective shift um, on how we see them and, and the way that the sounds are prepped in order to show that to our, to our audience, like from a different angle. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a tricky thing. Um, and getting the sounds for the actual Mrs. Davis um, app dialed in just right fortunately we had a lot of lead time i designed some sounds ahead of time and sent them to tara hernandez the store runner um ahead of time to sort of zero in on well you know how much like you know an actual phone ui sound do we do we want to make this how much do we want to emulate things that you would hear commonly in in apps i mean everyone has their phones turned on silent but anyway, if they didn't have their phone on silent, not, not everyone, know. right? I guess sometimes you never know. <laughs> Every now and then, you put a new phone case on, and it, it, it moves the switch, and so yeah. like, oh yeah, that's what a phone rings. And I was like, I forgot, <laughs> click. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, you know, how, how much to emulate something that we hear in the real world versus how much to like hype it up and make it just a little bit funnier versus um, we did some experimenting with drawing from uh, other story points. 
uh, in the in the show, like in other story points that come up in the season, and working on ways to weave them in subtly or not so subtly. Anyway, we went several rounds with those and um, got those to where they. Um, I, I mean, I think they're just right. Um, they they, um, they convey a sense of um, what an app designer would put in, and also there's they sneak in some some layers that. Um, hopefully uh, speak uh, a little bit more about what Mrs. Davis is and where she comes from. I think I, I was fascinated by that because I think it's really hard to create something that sounds, that doesn't sound like some that sounds original, but like real, you know what I mean? Like real, like you're saying, like, yeah. it's like, I know how things are supposed to sound or whatever. And like replicating that, I just think that's a really great achievement. I don't know. I thought it was like really good that it's like, oh, you're like, you believe fully, even in a show that's so heightened and like all well, this crazy stuff. I mean, you really believe yeah. that this is like a legitimate app that could easily kind of exist. Yeah. And that I think is because of like, like the sound design, like all these different things around it. It feels like very real. Yeah. Thank you. Um, that was a combination of like um, some sounds that I have in my like personal toolkit, you know, symbols I've bowed or, um, various kooky instruments i've recorded um for things like this i mean like have, having a, a grab bag of you know my own recordings um handy to reconfigure and pitch in different ways for phone notifications honestly and computer yeah. inter like interface sounds it comes up quite a lot um so i started with a, a couple of those but most of those sounds honestly are like just me like making patches on the modular synthesizer and just like hit and record on Pro Tools and just like patching and tweaking and patching and tweaking and just changing until having you know sort of a sound in mind and kind of getting towards it, but not being afraid to follow tangents where the sounds that are coming out start to differ from what I originally had intended, but um, could be used to achieve the same goal. So I just start just hit record and start patching and just get, get going for like 40 minutes and drop a marker. Like whenever like, oh, I should come, I should revisit that one. Whenever I hear something that's like, interesting to me or unexpected um, do you, like i want to ask you a little about like just in general like i love uh well the magic show stuff that they have obviously with, with uh with simone's father and mother I, I was in there and i guess too even not not and it's not necessarily spoiler but the uh the, the crossbow sound i also found like really uh just like really great I, I don't know i just i for lack of a better word i guess can you talk about those sequences and like i guess yeah that that i thought was really cool the, the crossbow yeah, thank you. Um, that um, it's it's funny we flash back to that moment in some later episodes, and um, and we had to tweak it a little bit every time. Like like we we started out with with the, with uh, consistency, like presenting it the same sounds in the same way, um, and like at certain at certain times in flashbacks, it just like hits a little bit different outside of context. I think partly because in the scene in episode two with the crossbow. There's so much negative space. Like there's there's so much um, there's so much like, quiet uh, anticipation to it um, that when the crossbow eventually does trigger and hit, um, it feels enormous because it's been set up with like at least I don't know at least twenty five thirty seconds of really quiet sneaking, um, and so to flash back to it later, we had to uh, alter it a little bit and piece it up a little bit if it's like just. If it's in a, a noisier scene, we cut back to it for only one second. Anyway, um, again, sound effects editor Roland Ty did a great job on that, um, and that was one of the things that we built. Um, just built all the separate elements to be able to control it. And we, is it is it funny if a little girl gets shot with a crossbow? I mean, I don't know. You tell me. Is it? Fun? It's like it's it's it's. Um, it's it's got to read like it's got to read shocking, right? It's it's got to read. I mean, obviously unexpected. I think that whatever folks are anticipating in that scene, this is probably a notch above. Um, and so it had to read shocking. So the pace had to be real tight. It had to read rather big. We built it in layers, so it's very broad spectrum. You know, there's a real thump of of low end, which is. You know, maybe a, a person wouldn't uh, hear if they were standing there, but um, the character sure feels in her chest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, thank you. It, that, that's another example where, like, this is gonna be funny if we if we take the detail all the way really serious. Yeah, you know? there there aren't any like 
you know, there's no like, there's no like, like springy, like cartoony thing uh, going yeah. on there. But, but the end result is like, oh my God. <laughs> it, it's really, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's Hopefully really shocking. Laugh. Yeah, no, it's really shocking. And it like, like I said, I think the sound work is so great. What is something about this show, I guess, or like your work on it that you think, I mean, that you would say like, oh, maybe people wouldn't notice on first blush, but like it was like foundational for it, I guess, or something that you were like, oh, this really, mm. really kind of, this is something that's found like really key to this show being success, I guess, from a sound perspective. Oh man, that's a really good question. Um, I should have asked for these questions ahead of time. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, I think that, well, I already mentioned the biggest one, I think, which is that, um, like what our characters know versus what some, sometimes what we know yeah. versus what Mrs. Davis knows um, can vary quite a lot. And the way that we, we present some of the same sounds through different lenses, or through different perspectives um, uh, starts to matter like quite yeah. a lot. And some of the, um, although they're, there's only one or two recurring locations over right. the course of the season. They're in different countries every episode. Um, they have some of the same objects with them. And those mean very different things depending on what... <laughs> this is where I don't want to spoil anything. But no, no, they mean yeah. very different things depending on what our audience knows at the moment. Yes. Uh, and what Simone knows um, at, at any given moment. And when she realizes or reveals some things he reflects back on them so uh i know that's all pretty vague <laughs> no i, I mean uh, I, I think for people watching they definitely understand what you're saying I, I i certainly do i mean i guess like this definitely feels like a show like you were saying like that earlier that is like uh not you're not not going to expect maybe the recognition because it's such a you know in, in certain ways it's so a uh, you know strange or not not uh, it's unique right that's like it's a great selling point i feel like it also would reward like a rewatch, right? Especially kind of once you know where it's going, like, and then getting to pick up on all these little, like the subtle nuances with the sound and all these different things, I think would be really fun to do as well, to just go back and watch it all over again. I would encourage anybody who enjoyed the ride to go back to the top uh, and, and watch it again, because um, yeah, some some of the moments might make a little bit more sense. Some some <laughs> of the, the jokes that, not jokes, I'm going to joke, sure, fine, whatever. Yeah. Some of the moments that feel, like, funny and feel a little bit arbitrary um, in, in there and feel like they're, um, you, you know, that do feel like, you know, Mad Libs or AI generated or whatever um, on the way, when you see how they do tie into the rest of the series, I personally think that they wrote the hell out of this show. And uh, I think they're really satisfying. And wherever possible, sound is tried to to uh hold up our end of the bargain too and and, and be uh, um you know um and support that storytelling and, and helped uh be a uh, primary st storytelling uh, driver you know whenever yeah. just absolutely whenever possible yeah and I, I think i think you did it and obviously the the television academy uh i thought so too uh it seems so, yeah. yeah they did it right i mean <laughs> brian parker an emmy nominee seven times over nominated this year for mrs davis uh thank you so much for for chatting and uh, congratulations again on the nomination thanks very much pleasure 